Among all of the different types of monsters in the game, the machine type seems to have the most design versatility and viability. With this level of design, some interesting choices tend to be pushed aside for some of the more popular choices. Desk bots are one of those interesting decks that have real potential that, in some respects, have been somewhat ignored. Let's see how desk bots can be dangerous competition for a number of the more well-regarded decks. First, when looking at the different desk bot monsters, all of them range from 1 to 5, with each being a earth machine having 500 attack and defense. Starting with 101, the effect reads, This card gains 500 attack and defense for each machine monster that you control. If two or more machine monsters are special summoned at the same time, while this card is in your graveyard, except during the damage step, you can special summon this card. 001 is the heavy hitter in this deck, jumping to 1000 attack when it's by itself on the field, and it has the capacity on its effect alone to jump to 3000 attack and defense with a field full of monsters, which is not that difficult to achieve in a properly constructed desk bot deck. The special summons from the graveyard effect is also helpful, largely because it's not restrictive to only a single copy, but extends to all copies of 001 in the graveyard. Also, this card works both when you summon the machine monsters or when your opponent special summons them. This card can drive Cleaport players a little nuts. Three copies are definitely a must. Moving on to 002, its effect. If this card is special summoned, you can add one desk bot card from the deck to your hand. All machine type monsters you control gain 500 attack and defense, except this card. 002 is the searcher of the deck, and it's an incredibly reliable one that can produce numerous pluses due to the lack of a once per turn restriction on its search effect. While the attack augmentation is nice, it is secondary to the search effect, as even if three 002s are on the field, their total attack only reaches 1500. But both effects are nice, and three copies is definitely appropriate. Among the five desk bot options, 003 is the most important monster in my opinion. When this card is normal summoned, you can special summon one desk bot monster from your deck except desk bot 003. Once per turn during either player's turn, you can target one desk bot monster you control. It gains 500 attack and defense for each desk bot card you currently control until the end of this turn. Wow. What a fantastic card for this deck. Not only does 003 thin your deck, it also produces significant versatility. For example, normal summon 003, then special summon 002, get your search, and have a possible 2000 attack level 003 on the field due to both 003 and 002's effect. Or special summon 001 and have a 2500 attack point monster through its effect. Mid game, special summon a 004 and produce even more advantage after destroying an opponent's monster. 003 can be incredibly dangerous when multiple copies are on the field due to its ability to stack multiple attacks, increasing effects on a single desk bot producing an instant OTK. Like 002, 003 doesn't have a once per turn restriction on it where even if you have multiple copies you can only use one 003 effect. The special summons provided by 003 can also trigger numerous secondary card effects that will be discussed further. Deskbot 4 is actually sneaky good in this deck because of the synergy between its two effects, which are if this card battles a monster during damage calculation either player's turn, you can send one deskbot monster from your deck to the graveyard except deskbot 004, and if you do, this card gains attack and defense equal to the level of the monster sent to the graveyard by this effect times 500 during that damage calculation only. If you activated this effect, your opponent takes no further battle damage this turn. If this card destroys an opponent's monster by battle, you can special summon two desk bot monsters with different levels from your hand and graveyard in defense position. The first effect can effectively fuel the second effect, as well as set up other plays. The only real drawback to 004, and it's a small one, is it can't dump another copy of itself for the attack augmentation effect, which leaves this card at a slight disadvantage with regards to its attack power. The no battle damage, that's proper. You need to have some sort of balancing step. 
Overall, it's only a 2,000 attack by itself, and getting to that value involves dumping a 003, the only death spot you don't want in the graveyard because of its normal summons effect. But fortunately, 004 is rarely by itself, so it's frequently going to have either 002's attack augmentation effect or 003's attack augmentation effect to help its own augmentation effect. The special summoning effect is also incredibly useful, producing field presence, increasing damage potential, and synchro plays with 001. Three copies of 004 for any serious Deskbot player. In my opinion, Deskbot 005 is the crossroads card in the deck in that you either run 3 or you run 0. The pendulum effect is rather irrelevant as it simply is a stopgap to prevent splashing it into other non-deskbot decks because it's 10 scale. The monster effect is if this card is normal or special summoned, you can target one spell trap card on the field, destroy it. This card gains 500 attack for each face-up deskbot monster in your extra deck. If this card in the pendulum zone is destroyed, you can target one deskbot monster in your graveyard, special summon it. You can only use the effect of deskbot 005 once per turn. The idea behind deskbot 005 is to utilize pendulum summoning to access deskbot effects and generate another means to produce swarming. However, because Deskbot 001 through 004 are not pendulum monsters, most of the time decks that use 005 and to a lesser extent 006 because 006 is only useful because it's a pendulum, it's not really a good card, become more synchro based using the special summoning ability of 001 to fuel those plays. I really don't like this type of design because for me, it's too hit or miss for my tastes, and if you don't get the 001s into your graveyard early in the game, the deck can become rather inconsistent rather quickly due to, again, the level 4 and lower death spots not being pendulum monsters. Also, the pendulum zone destruction effect is somewhat irrelevant because smart opponents are not going to destroy it. Instead, the opponents will simply destroy the other Pendulum Monster, putting the onus on you to destroy it yourself, or they're just going to let it go because, again, you have to have the right circumstances for the Pendulum effects to be good. Basically, you know, so while the special summoning is available or the deck searching from 006, or I guess the graveyard return from 006 is available, I wouldn't count on it unless you're running something like Wavering Eyes, which probably isn't a bad card to throw into a Pendulum-based Deskbot deck. But this is not a Pendulum-based Deskbot deck. So no 005s or 006s. Moving on to other monsters, clearly because Deskbots are all machines, such a high machine count demands running. People who've seen my previous decks, they know what this card is. Machina Fortress. Fortress helps dump desk bots that are not 003 into the graveyard for future special summoning, as well as provides quality field presence and a fast means of producing level 8 synchros in combination with 001. I've said it before, I'll say it again, if you run a deck with a large number of machine monsters, running three copies of Machina Fortress is basically required if you want to maximize your win probability. For the final monster, I like running two copies of Gearspring Spirit. This card is actually crafty good in this deck, because it can be special summoned innately, which at, will add an extra 500 attack to 001. Its attack reduction effect is very useful in either helping 004 kill something to achieve its special summons effect, or set up 001 for a massive damage strike. Also, Gearspring is a level 8, so there are times when you can special summon both of them and go into something like a Felgrand to create field presence. Finally, while level 9 synchros are far and away the most disappointing synchros, especially when only two monsters are involved, not multiple monsters, which you know eliminates you getting Mistworm and Triss, you can combine Gearspring with 001 to make a double X Saber Gotems for situations that demand raw attack power where swarming is just unavailable due to you've been wrecked a bit or you just don't have the card presence. Another possibility might be running Mecha Phantom Beast Hamstrat to take advantage of 001 special summoning from the graveyard, but the not during damage step condition hurts 001 
the flexibility of the strategy doesn't have a lot of cards to protect hamstrap before it's flipped face up by an opponent's attack also for the more adventurous types cosmic compass might be another means of activating double one from the graveyard however I say adventurous because I don't like the lack of control over the number of tokens summoned and the compass is a weak monster unto itself and basically unless your opponent only has two monsters on, on board when you summon this card you're not going to get maximum utility out of it I like just gear spring works well with 001 when it's on the field gives you a little XZ variance and it gives you that nice oh I'm just gonna even if you have something like uh, Beals on the field well you can't destroy it by battle but I can drop its attack from 3000 to zero and then hit it with like a 001 for 3500 damage which might end the game when looking at this deck the swarming potential and necessity of swarming is obvious there are three important spell cards that are designed to take advantage of this aspect of desk bots for me the most important and of these three cards is Inferno Reckless Summons so I run three copies Inferno can interact with any of the desk bots giving you massive swarming potential and massive advantage including 001 as long as you have only three machines or fewer on the field when it's activated a nice card in this deck that promotes positive swarming is machine duplication I run two copies and the reason I don't run three copies is that unlike Inferno Reckless Summon, there is a less effective utility for duplication, thus it has the potential to be a negative draw at certain times. For example, machine duplication doesn't work at all with 001 because 001's effect bumps it to a thousand attack. Whether or not you want to use it on 003 is questionable because 003's strength is making plays through its normal summon. But, in the right situation, because of 003's attack augmentation effect, if you put all three on the field, you can basically kill anything you want. It's not that great of a card for 004, because 004, is, unless you're going to set up XZ plays, 004 wants to have kind of a clearer field so it can maximize its effect utility, because 004's attacking effect doesn't stack, so it wants to have a clear field so it can start summoning other monsters through its special summons effect. Realistically, the only monster that really works well with machine duplication is 002, but whew, boy does it work nicely with 002. I run two copies of Mystical Space Typhoon because desk bots need to swarm to be effective, and it can be rather frustrating when your opponent flips over that fiendish chain or vanity's emptiness after a 003 normal summons. Closing out the spells, I run the standard general staples, the one Regeki, the one Book of Moon, the one Soul Charge, one Dark Hole. There's not enough space for two copies. Also, because we're dealing with the machine deck, gotta run limiter removal. I run a wide variety of traps in this deck, starting with the four general staples, one Torrential Tribute, one Bottomless Trap Hole, one Solemn Warning, and one Compulse. I run Compulse over Ring in this deck because desk bots can do enough damage by themselves, so the damage aspect of Ring actually hurts me more than it hurts my opponent. And also, with their high attack power, desk bots can run over a lot, but what happens when you run into that monster that can't be destroyed? Ring's not going to help you. Compulse will. Not surprisingly, I run three Call of the Haunteds to maximize swarming potential, especially through the use of Inferno Reckless Summons. Finally, I run two copies of Trap Tricks Trap Hole Nightmare to ward off those big key monsters like both versions of Trishula, the Travers, and the other common annoyances for, that this deck runs into like Castells, 103s, especially 103s, Exitons, and XYZ Dragons. Finally, I use two copies of Liberty at Last, which is a sneaky tech card that can change the game on a dime, because sometimes you're not going to get those cards you need to swarm. You're going to look at it you and know, say, like, oh man, I got two one o twos in my hand? I really can't do anything with this. Well, I'm going to set the 002, set my Liberty at Last. My opponents, typically, they're going to swarm. They run into my 002. I flip Liberty at Last. I've just screwed their field over. Also, Liberty at Last can combo with your own cards if needed. You know, you need to bounce a 002 or a 003 back to your deck because you want to set up a machine dupe next turn. There you go. For the extra deck, I run 
One copy of Double X Saber Gotham's. It's summoned through 001 in spring for raw attack power. One Stardust Dragon. You have to negate those field clearing effect cards like Mirror Force, Dark Hole, Exiton Knight. They ruin your day. One Yazi. Yazi is almost always welcome in my extra deck when level 7 synchros are a possibility. One Clear Wing Synchro Dragon. Nice field presence card. One Armades because death spots don't neutralize monster effects. One Naturia Beast. You know, that negation really hurts opponents. One Herodic Sun Dragon Overlord. Targetless Destruction. One Divine Dragon Knight Felgrand. Hey, it's Felgrand. Nothing neat more needs to be said. One copy of Mecha Phantom Beast Dracosac. One number 11 Big Eye. Four rank four staples, one Exiton Knight, one number 101, one Castell, and the one XYZ Dragon. And finally, I run one Skycav, because the 002s are designed to search. They're not designed really to sit on that field and do some damage. Their 500 attack power, yeah, it can be nice, but I'd rather have bring out a Skycav and do some bouncing. Before wrapping up, there are two other potential cards that I don't run due to concerns I have with efficiency that others may be interested in. First is the third aforementioned spell card, Transmodify, which can rank up the death spots, so to speak. However, I'm not a fan of Transmodify because turning a 001 into a 002 is the only real meaningful play Transmodify can make consistently on its own. Pairing Transmodify with Inferno Reckless Summon is powerful, but I prefer Machine Duplication, and I do not have the inclination in my deck to run all three, so for me, Transmodify gets the boot. The second card is Chain Summoning. Chain Summoning in combination with a normal summon 003 can produce an OTK scenario that creates a 5 monster field with two 003s, two 002s, and another desk bot of your choosing. However, Chain Summoning is rather inconsistent in this deck outside of that combination with 003, and the 003 combination doesn't produce a guaranteed win because you can run slam, slam right into a mirror force, so I choose not to run it. Finally, I don't run Deskbot Jet because if the deck is not a Pendulum build, which this deck obviously is not, I feel that Jet isn't worth the resources that you have to invest in to get it for its effects. Playing Deskbots does take a little getting used to, but they can be very destructive when played properly. The rest of this deck is designed to ensure proper special summoning potential as well as provide a defensive structure to produce field clearance and maintain field control. The thing you'll find that can be especially annoying for your opponent is that once desk bots establish a level of field presence, they can be rather difficult to get rid of via battle because 001 will typically be a 2500 or higher attack point monster 003 can amplify everybody's attack basically guaranteeing your, your opponent's going to need multiple monsters to do anything 004 can go from a base 500 up to a 2000 plus with any augmentations by 002 or 003 with mass removal commonly low priority for most decks, for some reason, when this deck gets going, which doesn't take much, it can be a beast. Although I don't talk much about side decks, I would side in a few Dark Bribe, because I've always felt Dark Bribe is one of those hugely underrated cards, because everyone says, oh my god, you're letting your opponent draw, oh, well, we can never use this. If I'm letting my opponent draw one card, but I'm stopping a Regeki that would kill four desk bots, I'll take that 100% of the time, thank you. Well, this is my Deskbot deck. Thank you for your attention and your time. I'm out.